They get to see an owl, and then we're going to be writing about an owl. So they have this firsthand experience, and it's up close. It's closer than you would have if you went to the zoo in person, and that makes it just more of a, a personal language experience for them to write about. We were learning about nighttime animals. They could sleep in the daytime and be awake at night, and they could be like all kinds of nighttime animals. It will be hard to take care of it because it sleeps in in the day. Why did you like the Albus? It makes sounds. Makes sounds. I like that he could turn his head. Did you think that was neat? Can you turn it all the way around or just most of the way? Like this. Yeah. Do you remember how many vertebrae he said? Um. We have seven and owls have? Two. No. One. Fourteen. We always have the zoo come. This is something that we do every year and we tie it to our science standards. At this time of year, we're working on talking about the time change and how that changes the sunlight. We talk about the weather and in the same time, we talk about nocturnal animals. He looked like a big chunky mouse, but he's a chinchilla. He, I think he, his name was that. Charlie, yeah. They're very, 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 very soft. He kind of looked like a big mouse, like a really big mouse, but a lot fur, like a lot more fur. And there are a lot of adults that don't know what the word nocturnal means or diurnal. Diurnal means that you're awake during the day and nocturnal is awake at night. And here's kindergartners using language that they wouldn't have used before. And it's, they're gonna remember it because of the visitor. <laughs>